थैंक यू बेटे सोसाइटी और सरकमस्टांसेस एज स्टेटेड इन द श्रीमद् भागवत डिवोशनल सर्विस इज रेजिडेंटल एंड एंड हैज नो कॉज डिवोशनल सर्विस इज एक्सक्यूटेड विदाउट एनी होप फॉर गेन एंड इट कैन नॉट बी चेकड बाय एनी मटेरियल सरकमस्टांसेस इट इज ओपन टू ऑल विदाउट एनी डिस्टिंक्शन एंड इट इज constitutional occupation of the living entity jai shri krishna thank you prabhu ji so what's happening here basically rupa goswami is saying that both the execution and perfection of devotional service doesn't depend upon any material consideration doesn't depend upon any external circumstances and and that's a huge point because when think about it every other process of self realization depends upon some external circumstances for example those of those people who are into gyan yoga they need a peaceful renounced disposition they need a highly developed intellect right otherwise they can't do gyan yoga you know it requires a lot of speculation a lot of analysis those who are doing ashtanga yoga there is lot of um, um very rigid prerequisites that not that's not easy for an ordinary person um even karma kanda depends upon external circumstances for example a yagya cannot be successfully completed unless the time the place the ingredients the brahmins the ability to to chant the mantras is flawless only it is bhakti yoga that is completely pure and is free from any dependence on any kind of external prerequisites right so for bhakti um, chanting for example you can do anywhere anyone can do it any time you can do it right that's why prabhupad gave the title to this chapter is the purity of devotional service so in the whole chapter we'll talk about how pure it is and and shri rupakusha mentions many times um the various prerequisites of self realization you now he talks about you know good birth is required purity is required proper execution of varnashram dharma is required etc but then he explains that bhakti doesn't depend upon any of those regardless of your birth regardless of your purity level regardless of uh, uh, what uh, one and ashram you are you can do devotional service and if you remember uh, last two weeks ago we said bhakti generates bhakti we can get bhakti only by the mercy of the devotees of the lord and the lord right so bhakti doesn't depend upon anything external it has no material cause and so if you go back to the last two lines of the chapter that who just read it says it cannot be checked are you there actually just third line third from the end it cannot be checked by any material circumstances you see that yes no probably Yes, yes. Sir. Okay. Yes. And and it is open for all, without any distinction, and it is the constitutional occupation of the living entities. So I'm hoping everybody knows what that last line means. What does it mean? Constitutional occupation of the living entities. Anybody want to explain that? To serve the supreme personality of Godhead, to become his servant and the servant of servant. so that's our what it says is that our intrinsic nature that is our real duty mm -hmm. okay and then now shila prabhupad relates the interesting history of his guru shila bhakti sar sati thakur and how he very successfully opposed the caste goswamis who were claiming a birthright monopoly because my daddy was brahman therefore i am a brahman because my daddy was goswami i am a goswami and they said therefore only we can do pro devotional service 
So if you look at about halfway through, uh, second paragraph, it starts with, there was a great hard struggle for some time. Let me know when you find it. It's about halfway through the second paragraph. Yes, Prabhuji, I can, we can see. Yes, Prabhu. Okay, great. So there was a great hard struggle for some time, but it has turned out successfully. And it is now correctly and practically established that devotional service is not restricted to a particular class of men. Very, very important. So it's nobody's monopoly. You don't have to be born in a Brahmin family. You don't have to be a Goswami. Anybody can do it. So don't you tell me you are Shudra, therefore you can now do devotional service or you're a woman or you're old or you're young or you're rich or you're poor. It doesn't matter. No external causes can impede the performance of devotional service. And, and Prabhupada proved it by taking uh, ISKCON movement worldwide. And even to all the Yavanas and the lectures and everything else they can imagine. We'll read the third paragraph of this page and uh, we'll see this point being made uh, in more, more detail. So if somebody can read the third paragraph, it starts with, it is on the basis of... Can I read that, Prabhu? Please. Yes, please go. Okay. It is on the basis of this supposition that anyone can now become a Gorya Vaishnava from any part of the world or at any part of the universe. Anyone who is pure, Vaishnava is, is situated transcendently and therefore the highest qualification in the material world, namely to be in the, in the mode of goodness has already been achieved by such a person. Our Krishna consciousness movement in the Western world is based on the above mentioned proposition of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Pra Prabhupada, our spiritual master. On his authority, we are claiming members from all sections of the Western countries. And so called Brahmanas claim that one who is not born into a Brahman family cannot receive the sacred thread and cannot become the high great Vaishnava. But we do not accept such a theory because it is not supported by Rupa Goswami nor by the strength of the various scriptures. Yes, great, thank you. So a wonderful point is being made. Bhakti is transcendental to anything material. So remember, we have often talked about bhakti is on a spiritual platform. Everything else is on a material platform. So the three modes of uh, material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance, they're all at material level. So bhakti being transcendental to anything material is above the mode of goodness. Therefore, anyone who's performing a devotional service is above even the mode of goodness. And, and rising above means he has everything that's below it also. So he's in mode of goodness and also he's in the mode of pure goodness depending upon the purity of the service. So therefore, for anybody to say that you're not born in Brahman family, therefore you cannot be a Brahman, is bogus. And it doesn't matter what family you are born in, you can be high class, high grade Vaishnava. Can you, can you please mute yourself? Okay. I think sometimes we forget to mute ourselves. Anyway, so the point I was making was that anybody can become a high grade Vaishnava, pure devotee. It doesn't matter what country you're from, what ethnic background you have, what family you're born in, etc., etc. And it's supported by the scriptures, supported by our Acharya Rupa Goswami. Okay. Here, one more uh, thing to mention, huh. that somebody is uh, in a male body, when the, anybody, uh, any soul in the male body and a female body does, does not discriminate. Correct. That's, thank you for pointing it out. It doesn't matter your male body, female body, it doesn't matter. Yes, Prabhuji, thank the you. Young, old, rich, rich, poor, male, female, it doesn't matter. Anybody can do it. So once again, I'm going to pause and see if there are any questions or comments before I move on. 
Ko ji, I grew up thinking that those Brahminical threads are only for men. Can women wear them too? The thread, no. So the threads are only for men. men. However, women can be Brahmins. Women can be Pujaris. They can go to the altar. They can perform deity worship. There's no restriction on that. So they're Brahmins in that sense. Okay. Anything else? Prabhuji. Haji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sorry, I, I can turn on my video. Um, so in you know that same question just Naina Mataji was asking. Mm -hmm. So why women is there a reason why women don't get the Brahminical thread or like is there a reason behind it or just I don't know what could be the reason why women don't get it and still they are Brahmanas, but they still don't get the Bra Brahminical thread. Yeah, good question. I'm not sure I know the answer. Um, I'll have to find out what's the reason for uh, only men getting the sacred thread. Um, I don't know. Women are good with keeping the promises. Should <laughs> so be. They don't need the thread. It's possible. <laughs> I, totally possible. But oh. uh, I will find out if there's no. a reason. I mean, I they are Brahminas too. They can everything that men can. They can do everything basically. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Go to altar and do everything, but there yes. must be something that's distinguishing. Yeah. So I'll find out. I'm sorry, I don't know that. No worries. No. Worries. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhuji. Prabhuji, sure. since long since the history, ladies never wore the thread. No, that's true. But what's the reason? There must be reason, right? <laughs> there must be shastric reason. Yeah. So, uh, Prabhuji, Hare Krishna. Ha, Mataji. So Prabhuji, I actually don't know the reason, but uh, I heard uh, one of, in one of the lectures from the senior devotees wherein, you know, only the Mohini can be that unique. Being a lady and she is wearing that thread, right? Sorry, say again, when, please. When Lord came in, in one of the lecture from senior devotee, I heard mm -hmm. this, that it is rare combination, right? So only Mohini can be like that. When Lord came as a Mohini Murat, at that time also she was wearing the thread. Because Lord, Lord cannot remove the thread, right? I mean, when Lord, when uh, this was happening, our manthan was happening. Mm -hmm. At that time, Lord came uh, as a mohini, right, mm -hmm. to uh, to distract all the demons. Mm -hmm. So even that time, he was wearing thread. So okay. that unique combination only Lord can carry. So in one of the lectures, I just heard it that, you know, no, that unique combination. Very, very good point. But question still remains. Hmm. Why yes, do Prabhu. ordinary men, uh, sorry, why can ordinary men wear it, whereas ordinary women cannot? So what's the yes, reason? Yes, yes. yes. So so that's I, what I don't know the answer. Yeah, yeah and but, I appreciate that. But I appreciate your point. So let me do some research and uh, next week, hopefully I can answer the question. Prabhu, I have one more question. Actually, no. not question. Something no. that I heard over the period of time that, you know, do other sampradays uh, follow the same rituals as our Gaudiya Vaishnav sampraday? I mean, like, because I, I mean, like, when you listen and then there are controversies ab about and against ESCON and then they're like, wo log kisi ko bhi utha ke Brahman bana dete hai. Right? This is like a common saying in India. But of course, now we read and when you go now I'm referring back to Bhagavad Gita too because, you know, over there it says we don't belong to the caste system. We, it depends on the type of work we choose. Correct. So if that's so, I mean, like that others don't follow, it's just our philosophy follows it. No, so see, that was the struggle that Bhakti Siddha Saraswati Maharaj had, that people were twisting the Shastras and they were interpreting them to suit their interest. So there will be a lot of things they will simply ignore and some, some things they will misinterpret, give wrong interpretation to that and give the meaning that suited their interest. So the Brahmins wanted to uh, keep their superiority. So they came up with all these interpretations and they ignored what's really being said in the Shastras. So because they know 99.9% .9 of the people don't read Shastras. So they say, well, whatever we tell them, they just believe it. And that's what happened. So it was Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Maharaj who said, no, this is nonsense. Let's go by the Shastras. So before Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Maharaj, Rupa Goswami, Sarasati Goswami had done some work also. But again, this, the work being in Sanskrit, 
And uh, in Bengali, uh, a lot of people did not have access to that. So it was from the time of Bhaktisiddhanta Sati Maharaj who started preaching all over India, established 64 months, and saying, no, this is the truth. And then huge fights with Kasko Swami, so many debates and everything. Uh, there was a time when there were some Brahmins willing to kill him. You know, all those kind of things were happening. But finally, he did establish that uh, it's the Vaishnava, that's the real, real meaning of what they can do, not Brahmana by birth. And, uh, and even today, there's a lot of people who don't agree with that in India. And that's why Srila Prabhupada, our Prabhupada, had so much difficulty with the God brothers in India because they kept saying, no, you cannot do that. And Prabhupada kept saying, show me in the Shastras why I cannot do that. So nobody was able to do that, but they kept uh, making noises and causing problems for Srila Prabhupada. Okay. Now, just a warning, in five minutes it's going to be cut off, so we'll have to sign back in. Okay, all right. The next paragraph. We'll sign back to the same link, right? Sa same link that you signed today. Okay. Yeah, same link that you signed today on, not last week. Okay. All right. So, in the next paragraph, which is on page 48, actually, um, Rupa Goswami quotes, Padma Purana, Skanda Purana, Hari Bhakti Vilas, all these shastras confirm that advancement and perfection in devotional service is open to all people, equally open to all people. It doesn't matter what family you're born in. And then the next paragraph after that, he establishes that a Vaishnava automatically becomes a Brahmin. Okay, so let's read the second paragraph on page 48. I need a volunteer, please. Can I read, Prabhuji? Please, of course, you can go ahead. Is it the Srila Rupa Goswami one? The no, one? that's a Vaishnava automatically. Oh, okay. Sorry. Thus, yeah. Okay. Thus, a Vaishnava automatically becomes a Brahmana. This idea is also supported by Sanatan Goswami in his book, Hari Bhakti Vilas, which is the Vaishnava guide. Therein, he has clearly stated that any person who is properly initiated into the Vaishnava cult certainly becomes a Brahmana, as much as the metal known as Kansa, uh, Kansa bell metal, is turned into gold by the mixture of mercury. A bona fide spiritual master under the guidance of authorities can turn anyone to the Vaishnava cult so that naturally he may come to the topmost position of a Brahmana. Right. So basically... As the paragraph starts, Vaishnava automatically becomes a Brahmin. As long as he or she is initiated by a bona fide spiritual master belonging to a uh, bona fide parampara, disciplic succession. Okay. Now, having said that, in the third paragraph, same page, it is explained that life is not that simple. Just getting initiated does not make one a Brahmin. The rules and regulations must still be followed very carefully. And that's the key. It's not the initiation that makes a person into a Brahmin. It's the following of the rules and regulations following the initiation that makes one Brahmin. So let's read the third paragraph. Srila Rupa Goswami wants. Shall I try it probably? Please. Please go ahead. Srila Rup Goswami wants, however, that if a person is properly initiated by a bona fide spiritual master, he should not think that simply by the acceptance of such initiation, his business is then finished. One still has to follow the rules and regulations very carefully. If after accepting the spiritual master and being initiated, one does not follow, the rules and regulations of devotional service, then he is again fallen. One must be very vigilant to remember that he is the part and parcel of the transcendental body of Krishna. And that is his duty as part and parcel to give service to the whole or Krishna. If we do not render service to Krishna, then again, we fall down. In other words, Simply becoming initiated does not 
elevate one to the position of high class Brahmana. One also has to discharge the duties and follow the regulative principles very rigidly. Right. So again, it's this very, very important paragraph. So I want to spend some time discussing this, even though I summarized it before you read it. And so a few points are being made. First point is Mamevansho Jivaloke, meaning we are part and parcel of Krishna. You're part and parcel of the transcendental body of Krishna. Uh, the Bhagavad says here. And therefore, because the duty of the part is to serve the whole, it is our duty to serve Krishna. And if we don't serve Krishna, then we fall down. So, we have to serve Krishna and because we are sadhakas, we are doing Vaidhi Bhakti, we have to serve Krishna following the rules and regulations very rigidly. So remember Prabhupada often said, if you chant 16 rounds and follow the four regs regularly, you are guaranteed to go back home back to Godhead, meaning you become pure devotee. But the key word is follow the four regs rigidly and chant without offenses. So that is the uh, criteria being established here. This is our, when we said a Vaishnava automatically because Brahmin, there are some assumptions in that. And that is you're serving Krishna rigidly, sorry, purely. You are uh, following the four regulative principles rigidly. Then as a Vaishnava, you are also pure Brahmin. Okay, is that, is that part of point here? Because it's the key point of this whole chapter. Are there any yes. questions? Let's stop and ask. It's clear. Can okay. we hear it? But to actually drill it in our brains and mind, that's the difficult part. No, it is. But it is also a point that's made so often. We are yeah. part and parcel of Krishna. Right. The job of the part or the duty of the part is to serve the whole. Right? So because Krishna is the whole, we are the part, it's our duty to serve Krishna. Fortunately, it is also our intrinsic nature. We are servant by nature. If we don't serve Krishna, we serve somebody else, we fall down. So let's serve Krishna. But how? How is rigidly, rigidly meaning two things. Serve without offenses, for example, chant without offenses, and follow the four regulative principles rigidly, very strictly. And so much so that, like, for example, uh, it talks about the, the point of illicit sex. It is not that we physically find somebody of opposite sex. It even includes reading about this, thinking about this, fantasizing about this, all that is included. So it's not as easy as it sounds. But if we do it, 